Okay, hello. This is Good Morning America, and we have a special guest uh, this morning here, uh, August sixth, uh, August fourth, nineteen eighty-four, and it's from straight from Florida. Here is Mr. Anthony Gisello. Come on in, Mr. Gisello. Fine, nice having you on the show. How's everything? Fine, sit down here so we get you on camera. Nice having you on the show. Oh, fine. How was your trip up here? Oh, the trip was very nice. Uh -huh. It was thirteen hundred miles. I drove all the way back and forth. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, I, I don't know what to say. Well, really we, what time. we're going to do here, we're going to have a little story of your life because yes. this is going to be on a family album. <laughs> oh, and I want fine. you to I'm know, very, very you, pleased, I want you to go yeah. deep into your heart and give completely all your sentiments, okay? Very, very well, and yeah. we'd like to start right now with uh, exactly what day were you born? Do you remember? Oh, God, that was July 12th, 1912. 1912. Where, 1912. where was that? I'm a young 72. I'm healthy. I don't know what a headache is. <laughs> All right. I don't know what a cold is. I'm happy. I'm enjoying my seven years of Florida. But where, where was it? In the city? New York City? Oh, yeah, it's in Harlem. In Harlem. Do you remember and, uh, anything in your childhood in days? It was rough, and, but I grew up alone and independent. You went and, to school uh, where? I'm very, very sorry. Where'd you go to school? Oh, don't even talk about the school. I, I won't even want to mention it. Yeah. You had some tough you know, times. No, no, no. I just went to the eighth grade, and I, and I actually was raised alone and worked hard, and uh, and I had my way of saving a buck. And what about your, your What do you remember about your father? What was well, his first name? Way. That's a long story. I won't even bring that up. Four and a half years old. It was kind of rough. I don't want to even bring out the background. Well, what what was your father's say, first name? Something I wouldn't even want to discuss. What that. was his first name? Oh, John. John. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, uh, and your mother's? Your mother? Oh, yes. Yeah, she, uh, well, it was hard, you know. The only son, and uh, I had to take a lot of, um, she was a matriarch, you know. Yeah. And, uh. And I had to make my business to grow, and uh, my way. So at the rough. age, at the age of fourteen, you went out to work. Thirteen, I worked with your father. Yeah. And a water boy, and water boy, and water boy, and and uh, and then when Friday came, they all hand me coins and nickels and dimes and all that, and I prayed every night that I would grow, and and be on my own and be independent. Uh, I, I, I don't even want to talk about it. So you had how many sisters? No. Uh, four. Four. One died at a very early age, yeah, right? I, I wouldn't even want to bring out the past. Well, like her name is Mary. I like to bring yeah. pleasant well, we'll, thoughts we'll, into we'll, the world. We're going into your past because we want to sh show how far you have gone into your life okay. and how you fulfilled your, your, your whole dream. Well, I was a very shrewd person. All right, you have I always, age. I always enjoyed buying and selling homes. All right, now we'll get to one. that. We'll get to that. And Just a uh, moment. We're, we're getting into a point where your your first job was where in the garment business. No, as a printer and, and as a printer, and running the levees and, and shiny shoes and selling newspapers. I did everything, but it was an honest buck. It was an honest dollar. It was an honest you, dollar. You worked hard. Very, very, very hard. As far as what would you have to say to? All your I was nephews, hurt because I had no trade. To the young audience out there, what what should they keep in mind when they when they go well, out I, and work? I'd like to tell the audience and my all my family that's watching me. My sister Lena, you know I still love you. You watch me. I, I watched you on television, and now you watching me on television. And we so oceans apart, Lena. I always love you. Even that you don't write to me, and Lorraine writes for me. Well, we're getting back. I read. We'll, we'll get into that later I on. I read, <laughs> and I enjoy it. I'm a sensitive, loving father, uncle, nephew, whatever you want to call it. I think I've died already. But let's get back to what would you what would you say to the young young audience? Because you, you're successful. Your, your life has been uh, a success. Yes, yes. I what put would you my, say? Excuse me. I put my son in business at the Universal Art Gallery. They're all college material. Except me. I went to the eighth grade. But it, I build up character. That's what I'm trying to tell the young audience. I build up a lot of character. Like, you got to look at yourself in the mirror to correct your faults. And when you correct your faults, fine. To build up your character, you have to be normal mentally in order to 
You know what you are saying or doing, or like investing in the market or something like that. But you, you which are. Which I do play. Physically, you are in perfect shape. I would perfect say. shape. I'm a very healthy how, how man. Do you, do you train? I, do you I, run? Do you jog? Do you well, swim? I walk an hour every night, as a rule. Yeah. I don't drink, smoke, gamble, I don't indulge, but there's understanding, and there's a indulge, you know what you're thinking of, and I know you people are all laughing, that I'm all right, I'm a 20, 30-year-old guy yet, <laughs> and everything stands up. Now, let me ask you a question. I'm a young 72, and I'm happy, and I, uh... If you were to win the million-dollar lottery today... No, when I, uh, then when I retired at 65, I worked two years security guard, oh, 67. We... With the gun. Then I worked two years in a nursing home for rehabilitation. Uh, the ills, the cripples, you know, in wheelchairs. I talk with them, shave them, fed them for five hours an hour from nine to one. But it was like uh, something to keep myself busy. It wasn't money to keep myself busy for two years of that. All right. Then I worked six weeks at my son's place in the University Art Gallery, 77 hours a week. And I'm here with my, my nephew. Nina, and I'm relaxing here. The only reason why I'm talking is I know you're all listening, all my nieces and nephews, which I love you all, even if you don't come to my home, but you're all welcome. I said, and all the letters are. Do you want to give your address and your uh, telephone you know number? My address, then. What's your telephone number? So my, can address, call you. my address is 13007, you know, James Bond, 007, right. Wood Way. Wood, right. And, uh,. Beacon Woods, I live in a condo. I have a big condo facing the, facing the golf course. Uh -huh. And the uh, beach is all nearby. And I don't want to bring out, I don't want to start throwing the bull. But I have uh, two swimming pools, tennis court. I have a ski lodge, a country club and all that. I'm very comfortable, I'm very happy. All right, now, getting back... Made to, many friends. Getting back to your... Actually, after marriage, you met your wife, your lovely wife, Edith. Yeah, 42 when years. We, how, how did that come about? We still, 42 years. Yeah, but let's know. get back to how, how you met her. How, how did you meet her? Well, I married the youngest woman in our family. She's, She's a, a Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Yeah. I'm, uh, how do you call her, cancer? And uh, she's fire. I'm water. When there's an argument, water puts out the fire, which you all know. Uh, but uh, since I'm a patient man, I, I just let everything ride because... But how did you meet her? At a dance? At a movie? No, it was, a, it was an introduction. They, somebody introduced you. Yes, Who was it? Do you remember? The, you remember? My sister. My sister? No, her sister. Oh, her sister. Uh-huh. And then what day did you, were you married? On what day? That was on March, uh, March 13. March 13. It was one of those uh, house weddings and... Uh, but while we had that house, I, I was just thinking of the future to get ahead in life, I I which I did that. I was at your wedding. I remember my father singing in the, in the, yes, in the house. Yes, yeah. I remember it was one of the, the last house weddings, I think, of that time. Now, your first child was naturally Linda. Oh, Linda. Now, Linda is uh, in she's Florida 40. Right now. She's, she's 40. She's an office manager in an insurance company, and my son-in-law... Eddie. Great guy there, and Eddie, he's Eddie, in the landscape. Fellini is their last name. Yes, Fellini. He's, he's in the landscape and been doing very, very well. And their children? They have a Phoenix home, and they faced a, you know, canal. Two children. My and they grandson have two, is, the names are? Yeah, my uh, grandson, 15, just big as a father, my granddaughter, Danielle. And I'm happy to have four grandchildren. But the thing is that I do everything while my eyes are open. I put my son in business, and, uh, and uh, my, I want to put my son on business. See, the only reason why I like to do these things here is I like to leave a pattern behind. So when I'm gone, uh, I, I would, they, they have a good word for you. I don't like to give things when my eyes are closed. I'm, I, I'm gone, and I, and I don't do anything. I try to keep away from both families, and I, I'm happy that way. I'm very independent. They say that the, as you grow older, you become mellow, and you become much more uh, serious about life. I'm still a comedian, eh? Come on, Rose. Rose, I'm talking to you. I'm still a comedian. You, my yo. Let me talk about my niece, Rose. Well, listen, we'll get to her later, because she's going to call. She's going to call you me, on the phone. Susan Hayward, after I saw you on, on television, 
It's Shelley Winters, or don't get insulted now. Shelley Winters or Kay Smith, but the, uh, the, you're my favorite. But she's going to uh, call no later. No favorite. The, uh, all uh, my niece. I don't know. Uncle Tony, she's, she's going to call insult. later. What I like to do is I understand you've made all arrangements when you depart this world. And how how would... In your in your eyes, you have you have looked really real. You're realistic toward uh, well, you know, very, leaving I'm this a, world. This as planet. you grow old, you become very scientific and uh, and uh, as a church go in Pentecostal, I've been to Baptist church. I've been doing this all along the synagogue, and uh, and I just realized that uh, you put it all together, and, and uh, sometimes you say to yourself, uh, "What's this all about?" What's the saving? What's this all about? We have to leave everything behind. Sometimes I say to myself, as a churchgoer, you know if there's a heaven or hell, I really, I really don't know. But sometimes, but I say to myself, it's a crutch when, when a person goes to church. But uh, being good, I think it basically, being good is, is actually the, the most important thing in life. Being good. Not to be critical to anybody. This is my advice to to people out there. See, I, I, I believe in the younger generation. I figure today they try before they buy. Great. I, I enjoy that. This Michael Jackson, all this bit, this rock and roll, I go for it. I, I enjoy that. I, I, it puts you into my life and, and it makes my mind much more... Uh, I see things the way it's supposed to. But years ago everything was a hush-hush which was ignorance. And I, I disapprove that. And I, I believe in, I was self-educated by being the social world and the business world. And that's how I have learned. I'm still a comedian, don't misunderstand me. I mean, I'm only talking now because my, I'm facing the camera and facing the whole family. And maybe someday in 20 years when I'm gone and you look at this here and your children look at this here. And uh, you're going to, see, I always like to leave a pattern behind. And that pattern is the most important thing in life. Pardon me if I'm talking too much today, because I, this is not rehearsed. This is the way I, I think of the way I see my family. That's it. All right. We want to get back to the family. You talked about Linda and the lovely children she had. How about Gregory? Now, Gregory is your son, and where is he located now? Oh, he, first of all, he's a, he's a language teacher, and then I... Gregory uh, had gone to college. Yes, he's a college, college. He's a college material. Very, uh, very sensible boy, thank God. He married he a, right a there. wonderful girl. He married a beautiful, uh, how do you call, uh, she's supposed to be a, a model. She's an artist. Marriage, and uh, she became an artist. And uh, the family's very, very comfortable. And where are they situated? Oh, they're in the King of Prussia. They have, they have a... The King of Prussia Mall. It's the biggest mall in the world. Not the nation, not. There's no exaggeration. If you want any information, you can always find out about it. Uh, chamber of Commerce. Now we heard, though, we read in the paper that you were working there uh, at the King of Prussia Mall, and you have stirred I, up so much motivation that someone came in there looking for a nude photo of a uh, well. Uh, see, a painting. Uh, could you tell me. us that story? No, I, I know when you mention nude and all, I give you an idea. One thing about the Universal Art Gallery, you see, it uh, you meet all different type of characters, uh, which you know what I mean. That goes into the store, which I have seen, and. Uh, like last week, the Vanderbilts from New York were down there, husband and wife, the Vanderbilts. And they approached me, I did not know them. And then they introduced themselves with their credit cards, etc., 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 et and all that. And we had people down there as the world turns and um, uh, another world, things like that. But, there was but they, they're very down to eight people. Someone. And I got so used to working those six weeks, 77 hours a week now. I did for six weeks, so I gave Greg and Marie the family a break. I figured, let me lose it. They said, let them. I want them to be happy. I mean, that's that's my way of uh, bringing out. The but the story that came out about the fellow who came in for the nude, he wanted. Oh yeah, that had a lot of. Can tell us that story? That was very. Well, I don't funny. know. It's kind of. Uh, it's kind of very. Uh, the, through my life, I had a lot of uh, uh, people uh, approaching me, which I'm not exactly. It's it, it's it's terrible. He, he walked in as man and, and a woman, and uh, it, it's terrible. I, I was in the gallery, and my wife was there, and uh, and they called him my. Uh, son's mother was there. So one of them passed the mall once in a while and staring at me and staring at me. So all of a sudden he came to the store and he says to me, I want to talk to you. I says, why? He says, well, I want a bank this feet. And I told John and Nina about this here, which you meet all characters in these type of places, just like in New York. And he says, uh, I, want a, I want a nude man. So finally, uh, not that I was naive, which I know the score, we have we have pictures of uh, you know ballets and uh, 
a nude woman in New York. So, so far as we have one here, it's about 45 hours. We have all different uh, photos and all. So he banged his feet again. He looked at me up and down, you know where. He says, I want a nude man. So uh, uh, when I uh, told my uh, wife and my mother-in-law, and then I told Nina and Johnny, they said I was naive. But it wasn't that I was naive. Uh, you meet people like that, then you don't want to embarrass them, and you don't embarrass yourself. So well, I let me understand. Away. You thought he wanted a nude man in, in a, in a yeah, picture, but, but fact, he wanted just... you as a nude man. Yeah, they just oh, wanted me because was... they, they, I, I mean, but, I don't want to... Yeah, but you, did, you didn't embarrass no, him. No, no, no. You no, knew no, he, was, I he had, was... I had uh, a lot of people approaching me that they... I don't want to even bring it up. All right, so we got to the point where we're going to have your wife... I had a lot of women approaching me, and... And what do you do for adventure and all that? But I just don't want to discuss this on TV. <laughs> well, we know we know you're a very charming man. You probably oh have, no, don't say that. The thing is, I'm myself, and uh, and I and I, uh, and I I can handle quite a few. Yeah. Well, in your days, they they said you look like Tyrone Powell when you were. Yeah, young. they said that. Uh, they said. Well, can we get a little Powell's profile a of Tyrone Powell? Pro no, a little profile. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to bring that. That's no. all a fantasy. That was all fantasy. It's John Barry Moore. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't believe. Who do you that. think you, you look gotta like? You got to be yourself. You can't pretend being somebody else. You just can't. Can't, but you can't be yourself. But your mind has always stayed the same. I got a young mind. See, uh, uh, you enjoy people. I enjoy people. I have a young mind. Uh, just like, uh, for instance, uh, how do you call? Uh, how do you call? Uh, if I meet people, you got to like the Romans do. You, you don't judge people like everybody. Just enjoy, you know, and talk to them. When you get to size them up, then you know who they are. In other words, you're learning something. All right, I, there's a phone ringing. the fault of all this, I gained that experience. The phone is, can you hold us? The phone is ringing. I think the family oh, is yeah, calling, okay? Thank you I'll so call, much. Yeah, just, uh, just for a second. Yeah, go right ahead there. The phone is ringing. Yeah, I'd like to talk to somebody. All right, I, I must, this is the, uh, excuse me. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, then. All right, uh, uh, this is, my mother is on the phone. She wants to say hello to you. Hello? Oh, Lena? How are you, Lena? Your brother still loves you, you know. <laughs> yeah? Your ear? I got the same problem, but there's one thing about anybody that has that kind of a nose or anything. You gotta learn to live with it. And when you learn to live with it, and while you're working, you forget what ails you. That's a, it's a, I was told that I was a philosopher, uh, which I, I, I've gained through, uh, through experience. So, um, oh, you all right there? Uh, yeah, I saw you on television. It's a funny thing, like, I'm, I'm looking at you on television, and then now you're looking at me on television. It's like an ocean's apart. It's a funny thing, but uh, uh, the spirit is still there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I heard you were going there. I'm sorry I couldn't make it, because uh, I got so much, uh, bu so much to do. Yeah, I got, uh, I'm going to leave in Johnny's house uh, sometime this afternoon. And then I uh, got to pick up a couple uh, in um, in North Carolina, and then I'm going to go home. But uh, yeah, either be here around October, something. She's coming along because I I like my my swim. I swim every day. Yeah, Lee. Yeah, nice talking. Go I speak to the Rose. Rose. Ro? <laughs> yeah, Ro. Yeah. Uh, I love you too. Just remember, you were my first niece, you know. And I was, when I was a little kid, I used to save my nickels and dimes to buy you a blanket. I always called you Susan Haywood. I saw you on television. I, as long as you were happy. Eddie Solo, you got a good mate, doesn't he? Yeah, it's good. Nice guy. Take care of you. Yeah, they put, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, you could put, uh, you could put Marianne or Jimmy, whatever it is. Hey, hello, Jim. Ah, uh, I miss you too, don't worry. You're still my nephew. If you don't write to me, no, I don't turn these wordings or something like that. Maddie? Yeah, I love her too. I remember when she worked for Lynn in the Fordham Road. We look forward to her coming to my home. Yeah, she looks good on television. She looks kind of happy. I'm glad. Uh, Maddie, yeah, a few seconds. That's all I want. Hey, Maddie. <laughs> oh, nice to hear you. <laughs> nice to hear your voice. You're selling my gun there. You miss Uncle Tony? You do? What? What happened? Oh. What did she 
Yeah, I heard about your father. Well, let's face it. Uh, let's face it. There, uh, we all going that one trip there. No, no, don't, no, Mary, don't feel too bad. No. No, don't feel too bad. No, I, you know, I, because I'm on my way out myself. I mean, you wanted me like it. Now, don't, no, I'm not going to talk to you now. All right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, let me speak to Marie. I still love you. Yeah. Marie? You son of a goat. You're still cooking. <laughs> Yeah, you always been like that. You know, I tell you, there's a, if there's a heaven, you're going to be the first to go up there because you're very charitable. You do charitable while you're alive. Yeah, you're very good. You got good children, nice there. Tony? Ah, he's a funny guy. He's all right. He's going to live a long time, that son of a gun there. Yeah, hey, Tony? Yeah, hey, I'll put him on, yeah. Hello, Tony. You son of a gun there. You put a lot of weight there. What are you doing to yourself smoking a cigar? I saw you on television there. Yeah? No, no. Things do happen. Now you gotta learn to live with it, Tony. Working hard? Yeah, we'll take it easy. Now I won't keep you on too long, though. No. Yeah. Yeah, put Lorraine on. You know, I like to speak to everybody. All right, Tom. Take care of yourself, Tom. We still love you, so. You're welcome any time to my home, you and Marie and kids. All right, put my Lorraine on. Hey, here's a lot of bad news. Sometimes you even hate to hear these things here. Because I'm young and hot and... All right, then. So long, Tom. Lorraine? Uh, you know how I got your name. You know how you got your name. When you were born, I gave you that name. After Lorraine Dave. Yeah. You talk with a smile every time. I can't put you out of a six children. I just, I just can't, Lorraine. Believe me. You still get to talk with a smile and Frank with that, that big cigar over there. Yeah. He's a great guy. I'm glad you people are in business. Makes me feel like the, the ge generation of tomorrow is growing while the generation of yesteryear is leaving. Yeah, we're rusting away. That's, that's life. All right, Lorraine, I'll put Frankie on. Hi, Frankie. Yeah, yeah, I saw you on television. Yeah. I had a big party there. You know how I felt when I was watching the movie? I felt I was there, joining you, talking, laughing, eating. I, I, I felt lost for a minute. I thought I was in that party. I couldn't make it, no. It's very, very hard. I, 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 it was impossible. I don't run like I used to, you know, the sage. Uh, I don't want to sound like a wet blanket, but Uncle Tone never was. All right, Frank. I know you. What? Don't mind me. I have one bad ear. I'm going for a hearing aid in October. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the only defect I had since I was a kid, but uh, you don't like to live with that. That doesn't bother me at all. I don't like to complain, because when you start complaining with people, how do you call they don't want to know you? When you're happy, you joke around all that, you make many friends. That's why I made friends in Florida. I'm happy, yeah. All right, Frank. That's a luck to you. Take care of yourself now. We all love you. All right. That's it. All right. I want to hang up. I think I've talked too much. Okay. All right, then. Okay, that was very nice. And I think right now we'll take a break and we'll we'll introduce your wife, uh, Edith, in here, and uh, we'll we'll come right back. And we got more tape on it. We got more tape. You got it on? Okay. All right. Here we go. Now we're we're gonna we're gonna introduce to you uh, Mrs. Edith Gisillo, the wife of uh, Mr. Anthony Gisillo, you just recently uh, viewed, and here she is now coming straight from Florida, and she's walking into the room, Mrs. Edith Gisillo. Yes, morning, how Dad. are you? Fine. How are you? Fine. You had a good night's rest? Oh, beautiful, uh -huh. beautiful. Okay. Very nice. You know, this is not like Good Morning America, but we're going to try and get back to your life and talk to you about, about you. No one really knows about you. 
Your husband was I've here. I've been a mystery, right. And you've been a mystery. So you want to talk into this microphone. Surely. And we want to find out your maiden name. What was your maiden name before you were married? Di Giovanni. Di Giovanni. Uh -huh. Right. And what was your family uh, made up of? How many children? I think we were six. Right. They, my people came from Abruzzi. Abruzzi. Uh-huh. From Aguila, the uh -huh. town of Aguila. And uh, my father migrated here. And he was a jeweler by trade. Oh, I didn't know that. And we, they uh, they located in uh, Newark, New Jersey. New Jersey. And that's where I was born. Oh. On December fourteenth. I'm not going to mention the, the year. year. Okay, but we know you're a Sagittarius. <laughs> right, uh -huh. right, Sagittarius. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, we got to the point with your husband is when you met him, uh, he he says he was it, you were introduced. Do you remember? It? More yes. clearly, could you tell yes. us? Yes, my sister introduced us. Your sister? Your sister who, Vivian? No, my sister Teresa. Teresa. Uh, Teresa. How many sisters you had? You had three? Two. We were names. three girls. Yeah. Virginia, names, no. Teresa, and Ida. Uh-huh. All right. And your brother? My brothers were Raymond, Carmine, and Philip. I see. And your sister Teresa was the one who really... Right. How did she arrange it? Well, she met him at Orchard Beach. Oh. Yes. Yeah, you know, the way... In those days, they were... Uh, Everybody used to go to Orchard Beach and have... Uh, mating. The mating ma season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mating season. And she brought him home. They had a party. And uh, she brought him home. And uh, he asked me out. Uh -huh. And he was positive he was going to marry me. Right. And I told him to take a walk. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had no intentions of getting married. How old was he? At that time, I was about 21. 21. And he was about how old? Well, he was uh, 28, 29. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So actually, uh, how long did it take the courtship? Oh, over four years. Four years. Right. Oh, oh yeah, we had some battles in really? those four really? years. So you really put it together in four years. So, looking back at it, uh, it uh, if if you were to do it all over again, would you have changed anything? I hate to say this. <laughs> <laughs> we better not I say. I certainly it. would. <laughs> I certainly would change everything. Oh, you I was just telling Nina, I'm sorry, I only have one life to live, because if I had a second life, it would be an entirely uh, different world. All right, but you, you, you look all the better for it. All these years, how many years you married now? I think 42 or 43. And, and that's, that's a tribute. It's got to be a tribute to both of you, you know. I mean, Well, I had a lot of stamina. Yeah, right, right. I stuck in there. All right, your first child was uh, Linda. Linda. And she was born in the Bronx, wasn't she? Uh, Linda was born in the Bronx, right. Yeah, yeah. Where, whereabouts? Uh, yeah, Cortona Park West, I think it was Cortona called. Cortona Park West. And how'd you get to call her Linda? Linda. And, well, I really don't know, but I think I remember a song was very song. popular. Right, right. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, Linda was Linda was your firstborn. Right. And uh, then came your Gregory. son. Gregory. Gregory. Gregory uh -huh. came four years later. Four years later. And it was I had been reading about uh, Pope Gregory, I and see. that's how we you named him named Gregory. Pope? From the Pope. From the Pope's name, <laughs> right. That's the truth. That's the truth. Very, it wasn't the tomato paste or anything like that. Mm, it was no, that, okay. no, no, no. I never even remember the tomato paste. <laughs> okay. But uh, as we go on to your, in your early years, I know you did a lot of struggling. You worked oh. very hard. And I know... Well, you know, Johnny. I know, I know both of you worked saved and saved and saved and lived in a tenement for right. so many years. That's right. Like everybody else. Like everyone else. And could you recall some of the moments, the treasure moments that you had during those years. What were, what were some of the... Your daughter getting married I naturally had to be one of them, but prior to that, you you, you had some well, good moments. Have, yeah. When I had my son. Yeah, your son. That was a, that was a big moment, uh -huh. of course. And life... When Greg graduated uh -huh. college at Iona, All that right. was a big tribute. And when he, uh, when he was married, he married a beautiful girl, Maria, uh -huh. Uh -huh. which you I know like very much. Uh -huh. And there's a painting up there, by the way. If you happen to see, Maria has uh, painted that for us, and she, we have a couple of paintings in the house. She's quite an artist. She's yes, a beautiful she is. girl, too. Beautiful girl. And uh, as far as uh, as far as up, up to a point uh, you started making your moves, what I mean, you started to move. We're trying to get the number of moves you made oh, from I won't even that go point into that. on. To, you moved from the Bronx to where? To Yorktown Heights. You you bought a house in Yorktown Heights. Right. All right. That was that was way back when. What year would you oh, say? Oh, I think it was 1960. Was it in the 60s? 60s? In the 60s. Now that you became you became your own gold rush. I mean, people at that time were 
you were way ahead of the times. You were buying and selling homes at that right, time. Right, right. So you bought and sold in Yorktown. Right. How many times did you live in York? You had two houses in Yorktown. In Yorktown, we had two. That's two right. Houses, yeah, that's right. right. One moved. on Sawmill and one on, um, oh, I can't remember the other name. Locust. 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 Yeah. And I remember one cold night you called us at my house and you want you wanted to move to right. Mount Vernon. So we found your rooms in Mount Vernon. It That's was right. it was That's a rented right. house. This is your life. Around right? a corner. And, you, <laughs> and, and 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 tell us how many moves in Mount Vernon. So far oh, we have two moves. Oh God, please, Johnny. I don't even want to go through that. Well you have one on Park Avenue. Right. Then you move to Crary. the Albanos. Right, yeah, Albano. The Albanos. And then to what? Crary Park. Crary. And then to Crary. Oh yeah, it was like and a chessboard. The, the big move was the house in Bronxville. Right, we went All to right. Bronxville. And that's where people don't understand that you 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 kept doing this to build up your financial worth. And right. I think at this time we're not even going to ask you, but we know we know that you have gone into the Florida area and have done and have more or less done this. Yeah, in the Florida we bought area. apartments and you sold them. Then you moved to Florida. And, right. And you moved how many times in Florida? Uh, three or four times? Yeah, it must be, okay. yeah. Okay. So, I don't keep track. But the thing is that right now... I live now, for the moment. Yeah, right now you're enjoying your, your stay in Florida, and that's where you want to stay for the rest of your life? Or oh, I don't know, no. As long as I'm alive, I don't know what I'm going to do. I keep. I like to move. I, uh, I have a gypsy in me, right, I guess. Okay, you think about maybe coming up north to your son? You never know. In Pennsylvania? I, I think I would. All right. This condominium in Florida, is that... You, uh, how can you describe it? It has a swimming pool and so Oh, yeah, they have two swimming pools, two porches. Yeah. It's a lovely place. I wish you would come down uh, and visit with us. Okay, okay. Would you invite the whole audience if, if you know? Everybody, <laughs> everybody. Come, one at a time, <laughs> or two at a time. Well, we I... We only have one spare bedroom. <laughs> so at this time in your life, you can look back in retrospect and say, you're happy. Oh, yeah, I'm If happy. you had it to do all, the end result is really the best result, isn't it? I mean, you're happy now, and that's important. Yes, I'm but happy. Today, you're happy. Okay. Well, I'm happy I'm here. I'm visiting with my right. nephews uh -huh. and his children, beautiful fellas. Uh -huh. Now, nice. you were over to see Aunt Antoinette. Now, right. I thought maybe we might mention her because I know you. she was very dear to you. Yes, and, yes, and very dear. And how is she feeling? Not too good. Not too good. Not too good. She's had another stroke. Yeah. Oh, an angina, an angina, she said. Yeah. And now she's home. She's paralyzed on the left arm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really feel sorry for her. Uh -huh. She had uh -huh. a tough life. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think she sacrificed too much, which I don't... I wish I find out today that it's not worth sacrificing right. for others. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a... Uh, you got to play each day at a time. That's well, the way that's it what works. I'm doing now. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm doing it now. You look very good. Thank you, John. Annie Thank you. is has always had that spark of youth about her. If you take a real close up, you can oh, see her, her eyes twinkling all the time. And as far as I'm concerned, right now, we just like to get Annie Edie and Uncle Tony together and just one last moment and have a, have a brief conversation with both of them. Will Uncle Tony get in here, please? And you can, you can just, uh, just, uh, oh if you can get, can you get them both in? If you can just give a closing remark to both of you, and this will be on tape, you know, more yeah. forever. So That's if you right. want to say something in the future. Profound, as, something okay, profound. Something profound, <laughs> and, and close it out, whatever, whatever time you want to close it, and say the end. Okay? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's a pleasure to have Johnny putting me on film. And uh, I look at—he looks like the fellows on TV, you know, when you watch them going through yeah, the. Uh, he is a TV yeah, yeah, he's a TV. A it looks like yeah. when you're uh, when you watch the broadcast. Well, and it has been a pleasure being here. Mm -hmm. We were treated beautifully, and John and family, everybody is, everyone's welcome. Uh -huh. So what, when you get a you chance, have, just come down. What do you have to say in closing remarks? If you were, you know, know that this was. The last day you would see everyone. What would you say to them? What would, in your heart, you would you would leave behind your 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 idea of life. Well, live day by day. Live day by day. That's all. One day at a time, and don't try. Don't worry too much. This was my problem all my life. Don't worry about everything because there's nothing you can solve. If God will solve your problems, no one else will do it for you. You could sacrifice all you want, you worry about your children, you knock yourself out doing for them, but they grow up, they have their own lives to live. So that the best thing the way we're doing now is just going around and enjoying the kids. Right. 
That's all. One day at a time. That's your turn. Enjoy every day as if it's the last. We speak sort of uh, scientifically, and uh, we sort of speak as a matter of fact, come to the point, and, and come on strong, all these things. Eh? Because as far as uh, we are concerned here, eh, a lot of people don't realize, I say, that uh, we all live in a borrowed time. And, uh, and and people take advantage of one another with this, all this greed and, and with all this hatred and, and all this jealousy and all that. I, I always believe in my life, I always believe in my life is when you give, it has to be a big thing, giving, giving something. Uh, I'm out of my way of thinking, I'm not trying to correct anyone, is it, more, more important. There's a lot of people are, are supposed to be church goers. It's sort of a crush. They're trying to clear their conscience. I, I don't feel that way. I feel when you go to the walks of life, like loving thy neighbor, meaning like hello, good morning, like I do in Florida. If they don't answer you, I, I say, well, at least I did my share saying good morning. And if they don't answer me, so you're charged to experience it. But 99%, especially when people live in Florida, if they don't answer you, they deaf one ear and they complain about their arthritis and, the, and they can't urinate and they got all the all this <laughs> in. So I feel, I feel uh, people are walking around like zombies. I don't give it's north or south. You have to live with what you have. You got to be your own doctor. You got to be. We're coming up to the end of the show. The, the director is giving me signals. But I, I, we only have about 30 seconds to go. Yes. Can I say one thing? Yes. In closing, you yes. both are very lovely people. And in a, in a closing remark, can you both kiss each other as, as a final picture of us remembering you? Bye. One thing I want to say. Right. It, uh, Rosie and uh, Ed Sola, I love you both. And right. when you get, when you go to Tampa, please come I got and you. visit people with us. Come. Okay. Okay. A closing kiss to end the end of the segment. Okay. Oh. Do I have to? Yes. Well, you have my, <laughs> at the 42 years. 42 years, and it has to be. It's mellow. It's like the first kiss. Try and make it like oh, the first God. kiss. Oh, God. Okay. okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay, that ends the show, and we hope you enjoy